Hey, my name is Dan. I used to work at the biggest car dealership in the country and now I teach fine folks like you how not to get fucked when buying a car. Now in this video, I want to talk to you about buying cars that are about three years old, four or five years old and why you should absolutely do that and never ever buy a new car. That sounds a little weird, never buy a new car, but I'm going to tell you why you should do that. Not only because of money, not the money, but because new cars are untested. You don't know what the problems that are going to have with them. I always buy three or four year old car because I know it has been road tested. It has been proven. It has been tested by other people, by other people who paid the full price for this car and they paid a lot more than just money because often the price that they paid was not just money, but it could have been their health, their life and their headache. I want to go over 10 car manufacturers that had problems and that's only 10. There's hundreds of these. I want to go over 10 class action lawsuits and see what the problems were and how I, when I buy three year old cars, I would avoid them. But when somebody's buying a new car, they would walk straight into this problem. Number one, Ford Focus transmissions. They're absolute garbage. I mean, they're absolute disgusting. The transmission would break at 20, 30, 40,000 miles. It's absolutely insane. There was a class action lawsuit. Ford got sued for God knows how many billions of dollars. It's just ungodly amount of money. Next one, Chevy cars would turn off by themselves. And I actually can attest to this from experience because I owned Saab, which was made by Chevy. It was owned by Chevy. My Saab 2004 9.3 turbocharged manual. That motherfucker would turn off while I was driving. I would be driving 60, 70 miles an hour on the freeway and my car would just turn off all of a sudden. My steering would get stiff and I knew that I can't make any sudden movements because otherwise it would get locked. So what I do is Pop the clutch, the car would get start back up and I keep going because it's a manual. But imagine if it's not a manual, 99% of cars are not manual. Your engine is going hella fast, your transmission is working, your clutch is engaged. Imagine if all of a sudden, all of that stops at 60 miles an hour. You're fucked, your car is fucked. If you're alive after that, you're in luck, dude, you're in luck. And that's why there was a class action lawsuit. But let's move on. Volkswagen emission scandal. They had emissions which were 40 times more than that was allowed by norm. Not four times more, not 40% more, 40 times more. That's a huge difference. That is insane. Let's move on to Ford Pinto that was exploding in rear end accidents. This is Ford Pinto. Somebody would hit it like 10 miles an hour, 20, 30 miles an hour. Ford Pinto would literally explode like in Michael Bay movies. I mean an actual fucking explosion, not just start a fire, motherfucker would explode. Everybody that was in the car would just die, 90% burns, that's like human steak. People would die in like one second, motherfuckers would be ending up like on fucking curbs and parts of their body would just be all over the place. Yeah, you know what Ford did? Nothing, they did nothing, they could have fixed the problem for $11, but you know what? Your life is not worth $11. Nissan CVT transmissions. Nissan has shit CVT transmissions just like Ford does. Simple as that. I mean, it's not as bad, but it's still really shitty. Nissan got bought out by stupid Renault, and I can't believe I'm talking about this like for third or fourth time over the videos. I mentioned how shitty transmissions are with Nissans. Just don't buy a fucking Nissan. That, that's it. Simple as that. Or if you're buying it, buy it for a very, very cheap price. Hyundai self-shattering sunroofs. Hyundai had a problem with sunroofs that they were not properly cured, so they would explode for some reason. I think it was because the rocks were hitting them or heat and cooling was going off. It was just something that was going on with their sunroofs. They would just shatter out of nowhere. Next, Jeep Chrysler transmissions. Shit transmissions with Jeep and Chrysler. I mean, they're owned by Fiat, the worst car manufacturer there is. Least reliable cars are coming from Fiat around the world. That's just the truth. Next one is Honda CRV vibrations. I think the only people that complained about vibrations in CRVs were men, but let's, let's move on to the next one. Toyota and Lexus, they had melting dashboards. Lexus and Toyota decided to save a couple of dollars, and I literally mean a few dollars, probably less than $10, 
to make good dashboards, their dashboards would literally be melting and becoming sticky. I mean, you could go into a 90 mile an hour drift in that motherfucker, put a drink on the dashboard and that bitch would stay there. That's how, I mean, there's a serious problem with that thing. They save $10 on each dashboard. Someone who would buy their car brand new would have a problem. I wouldn't because I know not to buy brand new cars. I know, oh, there's a problem. Let me do what? Let me skip that motherfucker and buy myself a different car. Next one, Subaru oil guzzlers. Subarus are known for their shit engines. Boxer engines are complete garbage. But on top of that, they had a problem where you would constantly have to feed that motherfucker oil a lot. I mean, you would have to spend $10, $15 a month in oil. That is ridiculous. I mean, $15 a month over a year or three or four years, that's a good amount of money. I mean, forget oil changes. You just add oil. For, forget changing the oil. You, you constantly have fresh oil. Maybe that was their design and we just didn't understand their amazing engineering. So that's why I teach people don't buy brand new cars ever. I don't care what the car is. Don't buy them brand new. Not only because they're going to lose 50% of its value in first three or four years. Not only because of that. Because you will be able to skip the problems that these cars will have. That's it. Let somebody else take the test drive for three or four or five years. Let somebody else be the guinea pig. You be smart, you buy smart. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up below and click the subscribe button over my head or watch one of those two videos if you wanna see more money saving tips about cars. This is Dan with 60 Minute Car. I'm signing out and I'll see you on the internet.